Uh, ombre cakes seem to be one of the biggest trends right now. Gradient color schemes of monochromatic color going from darker to lighter. Uh, and again, it can be used for birthdays, baby showers, um, and in all kinds of different colors. It looks great. Every single cake that we make basically starts the same way. So we're going to start with two 8-inch round cakes. And that's what you're going to yield if you buy a box mix, which is OK so long as you're baking at home or if you're using a pretty standard recipe. Once your cakes bake, they're going to do a nice big dome over top. So in order to stack the cakes, we're going to cut that off and make them nice and even. And one of our secrets to making a really dense, rich, moist cake is adding a little bit of simple syrup to the cakes. Michelle's doing that right now. She's got one cup of sugar and one cup of water, and you mix it together and it makes a nice little syrup. You can keep that in your fridge for a while and use it in drinks and in cocktails or for more baking. So basically you just, so basically just spread the simple syrup on the cake. If your cake is already really dense and moist, you don't need to do this. But we like to decorate our cakes a lot so in order to preserve them for a longer period of time, this makes them nice and rich. Uh, next up, we need icing. So Michelle's got in the bowl some basic buttercream icing. That I didn't mix beforehand. <laughs> uh, when we make our buttercream we like to add a little bit of water to it it just smooths it out nicely so that when it's mixing it's easier for us to spread on the cakes so I'm just gonna mix it really fast so it's gonna be really loud So we'll stick the cake down to the board, a little bit of icing. And then we'll want to put the smooth bottom part right onto the board. Use about two cups of icing to ice in between the cakes. This doesn't need to be perfect. You can just be schmucked around. Just make sure that it's even and level. And then we'll take this guy and put it upside down so that either side of the cake is nice and smooth. And then to finish it off, just ice the sides. So when we're baking our cakes, instead of using parchment for lining the pans, we use shortening to run around the whole pan. And then you put a little bit of flour in there and coat the whole pan. That way after you've done baking the cake, you can take your spatula and you can run it around the cake and the cake easily comes out of the pan for you. So that's it, that's a base coat of icing. They often use the term uh, dirty icing or undercoating or masking. The cake can be stored like this for a little while. You can wrap it, you can get your other decorations ready for it or uh, from here you can immediately go and start icing it to your finished product. Welcome to Icing on the Cake. Today we are going to make an ombre cake, which is a really awesome and pretty and trendy cake right now. So Pam is gonna show you how to do that. First though, what we're going to do is make this a two-tiered cake. So we're starting with an eight-inch cake that has already been based and torted and dirty iced. And then we also have ready to go a little six-inch cake that's already ready uh, and iced. Underneath this cake, though, um, is a tiny little piece of waxed cardboard. You can get those at any baking stores. Uh, but it's key to have something firm underneath the cake to rest on there. So the way we make it rest on there is with straws. I'll help you. That I stole from the restaurant. <laughs> These are just basic straws. Uh, and what we're going to do is insert it into the cake 
And essentially, you want to have an idea of how big the cake is and just kind of eyeball it and put about four straws in the center. Not right in the middle, but space them out. So once it's already down to the, all the way down to the bottom, we're going to take it and snip it and then pull it out and then we'll cut it nice and even. Just make sure that when you're serving the cake, you let people know that there are straws in the cake. There will be straws <laughs> in the cake. So you can take them out as you're cutting the cake? Or maybe that's a contest and the lucky person gets a straw. Yeah, like they used to put, like my mom, she used to put money, money yeah, in my yeah. cake, which is super unsanitary. Please it's don't do really that. really gross. That's gross. Or I guess you could wrap it like in tin foil and then bake it in the cake, which is also gross. But maybe just don't do that. But when I was a kid, they used to Anything do that. Anything goes. <laughs> yeah. It didn't matter when we were young. So my, another trick too is to continue using your original piece that you cut. Because if this guy gets maybe a centimeter off or a millimeter or two off, all of a sudden all of your straws are going to be at random lengths. So I'm just going to continue using the very first straw. And then before we uh, put them all into the cake, I just find something flat and eyeball it and make sure nothing crazy happened in the process and they're all still even, so that's good. So then we just put it back in. And we have four little stands that this cake will essentially be resting on. If you didn't put this on there and this cake was heavy, eventually your cake is gonna squish. The other thing that we use is a little bit of glue which is uh, just icing sugar and water. Not actual glue. No. So I should actual glue on your cake. That's gross. Oops. Yeah, and icing like sugar and water until it's like a paste consistency. Like glue. Like glue. <laughs> you probably already said that. <laughs> but not real glue. <laughs> And then, like I said, we've got the, uh, the board underneath the cake, so we want to get right underneath there and gently lift it up and place it onto the cake. Give it a little shimmy. If you were taking this cake uh, and putting it in the car and driving it somewhere, I would recommend also putting a skewer or a dowel down the center of it. If you're going to leave it at your house and you're serving it later that day and it's not going anywhere, then that's not really necessary. And you can buy those things at any kind of home hardware kind of store. Yeah, when I'm doing a bigger cake and it's a wedding cake, I like to use wooden dowels just for peace of mind that uh, nothing will, will break the straws. When they're little cakes like this, though, it's great just to use a plastic straw. Also, you notice that Pam has two different kinds of cakes here. It's totally okay to have a chocolate cake and like a vanilla cake because you're going to be covering it up anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So don't feel like that you need to just have a vanilla cake. It, especially with a two-tiered cake, people often will order cakes from us and there'll be different flavors and we're covering it up anyway, so it's really not that big of a deal at all. And going to cut it, you're going to bring the knife down to here and stop. So it's not like you're going to get chocolate and vanilla cake on the same. Yeah. Or you, you take the cake right off. Yeah, and lift it well. off to finish cutting it. So now we're going to ice the outside of the cake. We've already got our icing prepared. And ombre is just a variation on lighter shades of the same color. So we've already got a dark pink, a light pink, and we'll finish it off with white. So when you are doing this to make it the easiest for you, mix some white. Actually, just mix a really big bowl of white and then take some of the white and put it in a bowl and add a little bit of food coloring and mix that up and then take more into another bowl and then add more food coloring. That way you're kind of mixing it soft once and then just adding color to it by hand. If you feel like you don't have the muscles for that, you can put it back into the mixer as well. Whatever works best for you. So I've taken some icing. The key to, to doing this is to not touch the dry or the base coat icing too much. You might want to work off of the existing colored icing and use that to push around the cake. And Pam's doing a pretty thick layer. Like how thick would you say? Yeah, I was gonna say it's probably a solid inch worth of icing. We wanna be able to clean it up nicely, which means we're gonna go around a couple times and take some of the icing off 
So you don't want to accident, accidentally scrape down to the, to the white layer again. So when you are doing your icings and making them, just make a little bit extra just in case. You don't want to have to run out of a color or anything like that. Always make more. Because that really sucks. Always make more. Because then you also can't match the color up again to exactly the same as you want it. So always make a little bit extra. You can use it for decorating other things like cupcakes or, or something like that. Or just eat the icing. It's always nice to have extra icing in the fridge. Like a tub of it. Just eat icing. This part's a little tricky. I'm using a tiny spatula, a tiny little offset so that I can get right into the sides here. Start by putting some down on the cake and then putting some up against the cake. This is gonna give me trouble. Don't worry about how the outside icing looks quite yet because we're gonna go around and smooth it down. We just wanna make sure the icing is on the cake nicely and firmly. So keep going around. I'm gonna go up, up the cake about one third of the way. And we're gonna save the top layer there for white. And as you can see, Pam's doing this. It's, it's a lot easier if the icing is softer and not as hard, because then it smooths on kind of like butter. <laughs> yeah. And it won't, yeah, pull off all that well, chocolate yeah. icing and drive you to drink. So I probably should have mixed it a little bit better. A little bit more. But, you it's know. Okay. It's just TV. It's just TV. <laughs> we'll magically cut to it later. <laughs> Almost done. Uh, and Pam that. is um, using a small one, which is probably a small offset spatula. Uh, is probably your best bet. You can use a knife too if you don't want to go out and buy one. This is a super handy tool though, these little guys. Lifting stuff up, moving stuff around, lifting up your little fondant flowers that you made. This is super not smart. Want to put it back in the mixer? Yes. So we're just going to re-whip the white. As it sat a little bit, it got a little bit dry. 